So for Gone Girl, my mom thought that I was auditioning for the Emily Rajatowski part. Incredible. And she liked that. She wanted me to be like the hot girl with big boobs of who breaks up a marriage. Of course. But when I told her, I was like, Mom, I got the part. Oh, <laughs> I, <laughs> it's the much more fun role. I had a great time. You don't get to fuck Ben Affleck, but. Yeah, that's fine. Just, I want just a little taste. Yeah. Did you hear about the... <laughs> what? <laughs> it sounded like I was coming in with hot goss when I was really just going to ask you oh. if you heard about the Shania Twain concert. Yeah, I did, but I didn't get tickets. Oh, they're making content. Oh, my God. I've never seen other people. I've never seen people make content before. This is content in action. They're going to the Shania Twain concert. <laughs> I, can, I can tell. Of course. They're um, radiating Shania. I really want to go, but my friend is uh, playing tonight. Oh, oh, so you're going to that instead. Yeah. Do you, were you a big Shania person? Fuck yeah. Okay. Are you still a big Shania person? 100%. I mean, I would love to go to the Shania Twain concert, but also like, I feel like it, it would take a lot of effort. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'd have to buy the ticket. I'd have to like, oh, there's a fucking chicken. There's a bunch of chickens on the premises. God, but they're like, they, that chicken looks like Santino, my dog. Yeah. That's why. And the hawks get them. So I'm, I'm like, I gotta be careful with Jojo because yeah. Jojo's fucking smaller than those hawks. We don't have chickens. hawks. The hawks only come to the nice neighborhoods like this, though, I feel like. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. They are, there are some elitist birds. Very. I saw a dead bird yesterday, just like at the bottom of the stairs. It was so uh, sad. Yeah, I had one in, in my backyard recently. It was like an omen, you know? It de- feels like a bad omen, it feels, right? It's a very bad omen. This was a cardinal, too, which I think is a symbol of like lifelong love. <laughs> so I and then I buried it like you know because I thought that would undo the omen how do you feel do you feel honestly my life on? has gotten like good so maybe it was a good thing maybe maybe you are meant to not have maybe you thrive in a lack of love yeah <laughs> definitely <laughs> <laughs> I mean if, if I've made it this far then the answer is yes correct correct yeah. Um, if there's anything that we start talking about that you're like I re- don't want this to be on yeah. public forum just make like a fart noise and we'll back out great okay great um like a fart noise whatever your version don't don't actually fart right if you if you can if you can fart on command like that i want you to stand up and i want you to rub that ass in my mic (laughs) (laughs) and i want you to let it rip i wish i could i can't burp on command either if you could have one superpower what would it be fart on command (laughs) (laughs) the places you would go um no really what would it be Oh God! Um, get what I want all the time. I feel like that's like a that would be a great superpower. Okay, but in the okay, okay. No, I mean I didn't. I didn't, yeah. I didn't put up enough barriers. Yeah, in the oh. world <laughs> of like X, like DC, Marvel. Oh, superpowers that we know and love. What would you take? Who would you be? What if I was like patience? <laughs> Stop <laughs> it! I mean that'd be fucking great. <laughs> Wouldn't that solve all the problems of the world? I hate that, though. Um, if I could have one superpower, like I feel like flying, everyone's always wanting to fly. But, like, I hate flying. I mean, coach sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine how much just shit you're getting smacked with? Yeah, and it's, like, cold up there. Yeah. Like, do you look good? Like, are you comfortable while flying? There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. Imagine how dry your eyes would be. <laughs> Are you just what? shutting your eyes? Yeah, no, that. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're bumping into. Things. You're bumping into birds. You would need head. obviously many other things if you if that was the superpower that you chose. Do you think that if when if you're so if you're Superman, well he's an alien, so he's a bad example. If you mm. are just born with whatever superhero can yeah. fly, do you think you're also born with the built-in <laughs> like gutters like? You must be. You must be. It's not, it's not like, you know, like if if I could swim, I would need like gills. I mean, not if I could swim. If it was like breathing, <laughs> I can swim. My mom actually made me I take can... swimming lessons like for a really long time. Are you like a really good swimmer? No, I mean, I'm pretty decent. Okay. I definitely feel like I swim the way I drive, the way I type, which is like 
<laughs> like like incorrectly, but like gets the job done. Okay. All you right. know? All right. Small and mighty. Yeah. Okay. You like, reached the finish line. Yeah. But like, you know how some people like type like with like, like, you know. The four fingers yeah. and edges. Yeah. yeah. And you like, it's like the home plate and you kind of go back and forth. Yeah. I mean, I'm writing plate. a book like this right now. With this, with two single <laughs> fingers. But it's, it's good. I but mean, you're I've got, there's a lot of pages okay. so far. So that's what, like driving, like you won't feel safe in the car <laughs> with me, but like I can get us to where we need to go. Yeah. I don't think I've ever driven where you've, I've been no. in the car where you've driven me. No, especially in my truck. Like okay. I barely know how to drive that thing. And I've never even picked anything up in the pickup truck. It's just for vanity. The whole point. I know. Well, it's, I don't have any friends that call me for hauling, you know? I'll call you. Call, yeah. I'll call you for a haul. Call me for a haul. <laughs> okay. Call me for a haul. So what would you... We still haven't gotten down to the oh, very the serious... <laughs> the DC Marvel thing. I just yeah. hate DC and Marvel so much unless they give me a job. But I just feel like... um, your Like, I just don't know. Like, like, I would like to be able to, like, fix anything. That would be cool. Okay. Okay. Like, or just like no thing, like You're no totally things. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, I don't know anything. This is so <laughs> exposing. All right. Yeah, I just this... want to be able to form a <laughs> sentence. <laughs> I just want to be able to answer this question accurately. Yeah. No, 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 yeah. no. I get that. I get, I can that. get the prize. There's a prize, right? 100%. Mm. I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> I thought it was this house. You do. You win this house. Yeah, I win the house. Um, Okay. So you didn't ask. Mine would yeah. be. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, um, I forget her name. The chick from X Men who's blue who can change into. Oh, anything. Jennifer Lawrence. You'd be Jennifer Lawrence. I would absolutely just. I would just be Jennifer. Lawrence. I would be Jennifer Lawrence too. You know what's so funny? What I remind you of her. You remind me so much of Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> ah! Oh my god, I knew you were gonna not say that. There you go. On. <laughs> kind of though, I, but I feel Kinda like thinks. when I first started acting, I was like Jennifer Lawrence was hitting like her prime. Yeah. And I remember thinking, okay, she's. A very serious actor. Yeah. But she's very funny off screen. Right. I was like, that's what I'll do. Yeah. I'll just be very serious. <laughs> yeah. And it'll be like, <laughs> whenever I'm doing a talk show, it'll be like, what? Yeah. And she's funny. Like, and my vagina. You just say your vagina. I feel like she was, was always talking about her vagina. She does talk about her vagina a lot. Yeah. Um, and eating. She talks about eating a lot. Right. Which, Easy to do when you look like that. Good for her. Good for her. God love her. Mm. Um, But I think that that stopped me from wanting to be funny like it stopped me from letting myself be funny because i was like it's got to be a surprise yeah i can't be funny on screen because it's then a surprise right later that i feel boxed in mm. have you ever felt that um i mean i only recently realized i'm like sort of funny really yeah i feel You're like so witty though oh my god thank you so much i felt so dumb for so long i feel like i'm really hitting my stride lately in humor like i feel like i've made like some pretty good jokes that like then I'll like tell I'll repeat when I've told the joke. Of course, you know? but I feel like my humor it's like getting dialed. I don't know. I always I remember <laughs> so as a when I first started acting as a child. Mm-hmm. Um, this is I, great. Let's uh, let's do the podcast. Yeah, now. let's do the podcast. Now. Start with your life. Perfect. <laughs> um, I uh, they were doing a production of The Secret Garden in my middle school, and obviously I wanted to play the little girl. Who's well, like in the Secret Garden? I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not familiar. Is this the what? Secret Garden? The book? I I know there's a girl who finds a garden. Is that the yeah? Story? She finds she finds a garden. So <laughs> there's a girl, and nope. honestly, it's like kind of a, she. I think she like has no parents, but she like lives in a house just like this with influencers, <laughs> but like in England, right? Right. But right. like in the 19th century, maybe or maybe it's the 20th early. Um, but anyway. She, like, discovers, I think his name is Deacon, uh, a small, oh, no, no, not, she discovers there's some boy in a wheelchair hidden away. What? And then. Is she, he the garden? No, he is not the garden. There is a garden, though. It's actually, like, really beautiful. But anyway, she discovers this boy, but he's been hidden away, and there's this, like, man that, like, owns the house who's, like, rich and, like whatever like he's like gabriel byrne plays him in the movie i have no idea who that is oh my god what? i'm so sorry i'm okay failing you. i don't know the story I don't know in the any case any case you wanted to be the i girl. wanted to be the little girl because she's obviously the main part yeah hot shit and i'm a girl and yes you are uh thank you mm-hmm. and when i auditioned for it they cast me as the dad i literally <laughs> got cast as the dad 
And I really liked this boy at the time in my school. And he had also auditioned for it. And he wanted to play the dad. But he got cast as my son, who was the little boy in the wheelchair. Lola, this is traumatizing. It was traumatizing. It Have gets you, worse. It gets worse. Uh, okay, please keep going. So anyway, then Diane Nonurelli, who was the name of the theater teacher, like had to make a speech because all the boys were mad at me for getting the part that they all wanted. And she said that I was the only serious actress in the whole school. Okay. And that's why I got the job. The job <laughs> they paid me so yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just rolling <laughs> The part, film. the part. Um, okay, but this is a double-edged sword because it's yeah. like, what a nice compliment, but right. also what a cock block. Well, and such a cock block. And I was wearing, I, I mean, I looked like an old man. Like, it was a cock block in that, like, I was going to play an, an old man and yeah. that all the boys would hate me because they wanted to play the old man. Was there singing involved? Is this a musical? No, no singing. I only sang okay. once in it. I've only been in a musical once. Um, what was it? Drop it. It was Anything Goes, and I was the ingenue in that. Thank okay. God. You know, they <laughs> finally saw me as I as I thought. Um, but then the, the worst part of this was that I had this boyfriend who was a bisexual in the grade above me who was like, oh, it's for real. Cool. Yeah, in real life. Okay, okay. He was like, it's so cool that you're playing like a dude. <laughs> I guess. He was into he it. He was into it. Um, wow. but then he came to the, uh, show with this other really good friend of mine who, and they were in a band together and my sister came, this is like the only time my sister like ever came to one of my plays and she bought them like a six pack and she was in college at the time and she came okay. back to see me, my star turn as Archibald Craven. <laughs> that was his name last week. Forget Let's and she ended up like getting them so drunk that they ended up blowing each other in the bathroom. Stop it. I'm not even making a joke. Wow. So while I was on stage as Archibald, I remember I was really good too, obviously, but obviously. It, you know, they were blowing each other and then one of them got kicked out and then I had to break up with. How were you still in the arts? This is like, I know I was this, traumatized this by, is... by the arts because I don't know how to do literally anything else <laughs> except be incredibly vain. Oh, <laughs> they go hand in hand. Yeah, I know. Um, it's good for a podcast. Yeah. Okay. This all this. Oh, this is so sad to me that your first experience. It wasn't my first experience. Seemed that was my pivotal. I know. I actually I played like a couple like, uh, you know, oversexed uh maybe whores if you will sex workers the i guess for, the no i never even that i was always oh. like i remember i had like i played um i was in a play called Voitchek, which was about like a soldier that gets like uh i don't know it was kind of like a manchurian candidate but like of olden times and i played his whorish wife and then I was in Amadeus, and I played his whorish wife, who has syphilis also, because okay, um, Mozart died of syphilis. And oh. then I played, like, leggy reporter, too. Like, I was always playing. <laughs> Honestly, like, I was getting – oh, and, and then in the Greek festival, my first role ever, I was a sex slave. Um, wow. So that was pretty cool. Clytemnestra. I had a big – I had to scream and cry, which I did very, very well, obviously. But um, – Sluttily. Sluttily. <laughs> Slutty screaming and crying is still what I do. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's your signature. That is so wild. Okay, wait. So I want to so – Yeah, sorry. I could just list my resume for hours and hours. It's that long. If but, you wouldn't mind. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be great. And then I'll circle back. Um, I've gotten a lot of practice because people always ask me what I do for a living. And then if I say I'm an actress, they're like, what have you done? And I'm like, I want to die right now. Do you hate that question? Because you've actually yeah. done stuff. So you, <laughs> so you also hate that question? I hate it so much. Oh, there's no hope. Okay. There's no hope. But I okay. mean, I imagine that like one day I'll, I won't have to do it. But also I think we're in such a saturated world that like maybe that will never happen. Oh, you're saying like one day you'll be I'll, so I'll be well known. so well known that I'll never ever have to tell anybody who I am ever again. But also like what a ridiculous ambition. Like I will say I saw this video of uh, Katy Perry introducing <laughs> Billie Eilish to <sighs> Orlando Bloom. Oh, Katy Perry is saying how Orlando Bloom is like a big fan of Billie Eilish. Oh, yeah, yeah, Listens to all your records. He's obsessed with you. And Billie Eilish is like, oh, my God, that's so great. Like, thank you so much. And he's like, you're fucking great, blah, 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 blah. And yeah. then it cuts to her talking to her brother. And he's like, no, he's the guy from oh, no. Cr yeah, uh, Pirates yeah. of the Caribbean. He's like listing yeah. his resume. And Billie Eilish is like, who? Yeah. And finally, the Pirates of the Caribbean gives it away. And she's like, oh, that fucking guy? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Didn't know Orlando Bloom. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. You can be relevant and then irrelevant again, which I imagine would be even more painful. Oh, heartbreaking. You know? Yeah. 
to like go from being a household name. There's so many cases of it too. Yeah. And it's, I guess you're still a household name, but instead of being like, oh, I love this person, it's a what happened to. Is yeah, like a preference, yeah, yeah. Preface of right. It. Um, which I, which does sound awful. But so when someone does ask you what you do, what do you say? Well, um, I had a slight like panic attack recently. My boyfriend <laughs> works in the music industry and I'm often meeting a lot of like uh, people from the music industry who will, I mean, I'm a musician as well, but I also, I'm not in the music industry in the, in the level that he kind of works in there. It's a much bigger playing field that they're working on like pop music and stuff. But he's like, he's like in the biz. He's in the biz. And you're an artist. So I like right? me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I meet a lot of like people in the biz. I also really like to dress like I work at the UN. So I understand. <laughs> but like in like 1999. <laughs> the classic era of the yeah, UN. Yeah. The me. greatest era of the UN. Yeah. Um, so I understand that I like don't look like a super cool artist all the time. Um, but the last time that I met. Did I, t I feel like I may have told you this because and this is no shade to anyone in regional theater. But the last time I met one of his co-workers, um, he was like, I, what do you do? I, and they always ask me how I spend my time as if I'm like a housewife or something. <laughs> um, That's but this person, worse. I know, didn't ask me again. No shade to like a housewife, but just to assume that I am one. Yeah. Um, like I wish. But <laughs> sign me up. Though, yeah, honestly. Seriously. Um, he was like. So what do you do? And I was like, oh, I'm I'm a I'm an actress. And he goes, oh, do you do regional theater? And I was like, why would you oh, assume regional he, theater? Like, why? Like, have you? He did tell me this. That's anyway. <laughs> Again, also no shade to anyone who has regional. No, theater. but I was just like, like, what a weird thing to like just immediately assume. Like, if you said you were in the music business, I wouldn't be like, oh, do you write jingles for commercials? <laughs> <laughs> like immediately you know yeah, like yeah, i might yeah. be like oh just because i don't know what you do that doesn't mean whatever but i mean i guess so i haven't done like a, a big role in a movie or a tv show in a while so it does make it does make me feel like it has been but it does make me feel like also just culture has changed so much i mean when i did a tv show it was like the second or third streaming show that even that ever was. I remember when my agent called me and was like, oh, do you want to audition for this show? Um, it's on Amazon. I was like, isn't that like where you get like a book? <laughs> yeah. Like a physical book delivered to you? Yeah. Could you order like things off of Amazon at this point? If you could, I I, I didn't. Right. <laughs> I mean, I don't even think I ordered a book off of there. This was now like 10 years ago, but I, I don't know. I went to, I lived in New York. So I would just walk and buy something. Fair. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. What an interesting thing. Yeah. So uh, at what point in the conversation with when you're talking with someone about what you do, do you start, do you go to like the most well-known things that you've done? Like at what point are you like, I feel like I need to tell this person. Never. You, you never feel compelled. No. I mean, it might, I might say like, oh, I was on a TV show for a while. Okay. But anyway, after that incident, uh, <laughs> that incident, because I did murder him afterwards. But after, after sure. that... Um, I kind of panicked a little and I was just like, I mean, I don't know, like I, I like went into a spiral and later my boyfriend and I like he coached me on like how I should explain what I do for a living. Um, oh, okay. Like he was like a better answer than what you said, which was just like a kind of disassociative rant <laughs> would have been like, no, I've never done that before. But uh, I have like worked in film and TV and music has also been like a part of my career. And I was like, that's so, like, sophisticated and refined. So refined. Yeah. But right now I'm taking a hiatus from acting. And so I'm I'm saying, like, oh, I worked in film and TV for a while. And sure, now I'm focusing on music. Okay. And I'm also writing a book. You can put that in the in the bio. <laughs> you can put in the pre yeah. This is Lola Kirk. She is not working in film and television. <laughs> but she would if you off. gave her a job. But she's not. <laughs> yes. Marvel DC, she is available for specifically you. She doesn't want to fly. Yeah. Um, she does want patience. Um, yeah. Patience. Spelled. You know how it's spelled. <laughs> how, with, uh, There's a, the, with the, without the T. Yeah. At the end. Patience. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't want to be a doctor is no, what i No, no, no. I definitely don't. I would be a terrible doctor because I don't know anything about the human body. I don't think you have. I don't think it's like a prerequisite for being a doctor on TV. Oh, on TV. On TV. Yeah. No, yeah. I would love to be a doctor on TV. Yeah. Or I would also love to be a cop on TV. 
I feel like I'd be a really good cop. I actually think you'd be a great cop. Like a crooked cop. Uh, like a cop that you don't know is crooked until the end yeah definitely like what's that what's that britney murphy movie that's is it britney murphy i would also love to play britney murphy but i'm on a hiatus from acting keep saying it. (laughs) tell them you don't want them i don't make them want it (laughs) but if it was if britney murphy biopic happening me and that would i would i would cut off yeah a baby portion of my foot yeah I was going to say nipple, but let's be real. I can't, <laughs> no, I can't, can't afford can't do to do that. that. Um, to see you do a biopic of Brittany Murphy. Thank you. But like a good one. Yeah. Like I want like... um. I mean, I'd have to lose a lot of weight, which I'm not into, though I have lost five pounds. She was very thin. Very... Oh, well, drugs. Oh, fuck. That's right. That I realize I'm like losing a little bit of weight at a time right now because I'm actually like eating healthy and working out instead of like Funny. really depressed. Wow. And smoking a lot. Wow. And I'm like, oh, it's, it actually like feels good to be skinny. Like I realize I've never been skinny before from like actual like uh, like good. Right. Like, like good I, means? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Like I've always been like, oh, I've, I'm like my most depressed. So I'm skinny. Interesting. So now I'm in. I'm into it. Like all my my jeans. I, I, had, I had to I had to wear my skinny jeans. Otherwise the belt, you know, when the the thing whatever yeah it was too, they were too loose people the, know yeah we i was know. like wow this is crazy so you are a when you're sad you don't eat kind of a person i mean that has, not for years but oh, great. Okay. <laughs> okay recently when i'm sad i eat a lot same but okay. like i guess when i'm like heartbroken or really stressed but i haven't been that way in a while either also i feel like i've replaced not eating with just drinking so much when i'm sad that i feel like you know just bloated yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, can we go back to your yeah, childhood? Sorry, I'm like, my childhood. I want to know yeah. the beginnings. Tell me. Or so ask I, me. I <laughs> Tell me about my childhood. I'll do both. Don't Great. worry. Because I, I, I Wiki, Wikipedia did a you, which I highly recommend. Oh my God, good. Wikipedia. How's the pic? Is the pic good? The pic is quite flattering. Okay, good. I'm a big fan. Great. Um, I think it's from like Mozart days. Oh, Really? Maybe not. I could be wrong. Don't we had a whole me. debacle about this for years. The pic. Oh, you have to really? Buy, you have to own the picture. Oh my god! Peek behind the curtain. What? Yeah, you have, you have to, to own the picture. They're like, you can buy this photo of you that was taken on this day. Oh, from like Getty or something. Yeah, and they're expensive. Why? Why? And then the picture I really liked. <laughs> I was like, what about this one? I think we own this. My manager was like, that's easily seven years old. And I was like, yeah. So, and, <laughs> please, I'll go on IMDb and I'll, I'll look the actor's photo, and it's from 25 years ago. And I feel like I look not that different. Absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know what they're talking about. Those those reps. <laughs> those reps. What do they know? Seriously. Um, but so you were born in 1990. 1990. <laughs> yeah. That part I remember actually. Yeah. Um, London. Yes, I was born in London. Okay, so remind me, your dad's British, but your mom's not. No, both my parents are English. And oh, they're we're both? all English. Oh, and everyone English? has an English accent except for me. So why is that? Because I moved here when I was four. Okay. And so they were, they're all older. My parents are older than me. <laughs> Weirdly. Wow. It's crazy. Wow. Um, but my it. sisters are both, my sisters are six and eight years older than me. Okay, so, so they, like the formative they, years. Yeah, they're form- they were formed in England. Interesting. Yeah. We ask this a lot. My brother is 12 years older than me. Yeah, I get asked it all the time. It's very confusing. Yeah, you did have a very, like, form. You had a very formed answer to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's like a, a, it's a thing, I guess. I guess if you were the only person in your direct family that didn't have an accent, that, yeah. would, that would garner a question. That makes sense to me. Yeah. But also your reasoning makes sense. Yeah. So you come here, um, New York, right? Yes. And then... At what point we we have the Secret Garden life? Yeah, I, it was I started in the Secret Garden, well, a supporting strong supporting role. Wow. Yeah. Um, I want footage from this, by the way. We definitely have Can some we pictures. Insert footage definitely, from they like made me like a little photo album of me in the play, like discovering my son, whatever. I don't know. Oh my god, it sounds so deep. I know it really is. Should we redo this? Should we do like a YouTube yeah, version of this? Yeah, definitely. This uh, there must be some footage somewhere. I wonder if I was any good. I mean, people told me I was a good actor when I was a kid. 
I always I tried to be a child star. But anyway, go on. Okay, so so you weren't. I thought you were like in what what age were you first on TV? Not until I was 19. I got my first acting job when I was 19. And but I tried to be a child star well before that. Tell oh, me. well, I was in, I was an extra in a movie when I was five, a movie called Addicted to Love that starred Matthew Broderick and Meg Ryan. And my friend's dad directed it. And Ooh. I got to take the day off school and I had the best outfit ever that I like got to my mom like brought in all of like the clothes because they like made us like bring our own clothes. And I had these like flowery Doc Martens. And my hair was really short. I cut all my hair off really short to look like a boy when I was much younger. So I had, like, really short, like, weird hair. This was, like, 1995. And, like, baggy overalls that were rolled over to look like jeans. And this, like, cool pink and red striped shirt. And I got to, like, shoot water guns at this French actor in Washington Square Park in New York. And I was in the movie. And I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. You did. You thought it was so cool. I thought it was so cool. And there's a monkey in the scene. There's okay, so many monkeys cool, in though. 90s movies. There's so many monkeys. <laughs> yeah. When did they, st- I guess they stopped because, you know. Yeah, it's not. Or I think, it, yeah. Oh my God, the other day I was walking down the street in New York and there was a protest happening and I was like, oh God, what, what terrible thing that we should all be standing up for now. And it was a bunch of PETA activists outside of um, Starbucks saying stop the vegan upcharge over and over and over again. <laughs> Because all, they don't they don't feel they should pay more for almond milk. But almonds cost so much more money to farm. Nuts are so much more expensive. So much more expensive. So yeah, I was just yeah, like, yeah. guys, what? You want the the workers at the farms to be paid less? Yeah. Ooh, that's One nasty. almond costs, I mean, like, how many gallons of water going into the amount for the almonds? Anyway, whatever. It's ridiculous. It's a whole process. Anyway. Yeah. Interesting. PETA. But anyways, okay. Yeah. So you wanted to be a child star. Did this yeah. happen after you were on set? You were like, this is my life. This is the life I don't for know me. when I decided. Well, I I feel like being the youngest, my mom also like kind of slotted us neatly into like different artistic roles. Like okay. I was the actress. Jemima was, my older sister was the painter. Domino was the singer. My brother Greg was the photographer. Oh. So we were all supposed to like do these different things. And then I, I went to acting class uh, with this woman who had a studio apartment. And she called it the Soho Children's Acting Studio (laughs) because it was a studio apartment, (laughs) Um, (laughs) which I loved. And she uh, kept casting me in like kind of I was always playing like a grand dom and like um, in her plays, which were kind of like the like Costco version of like a real play, you know, where it was like like what we were like Agatha Christie. And then there were none was a play written by someone else called Murder by Bequest. Oh. And then all the characters were kind of like the like low rent version of the one from the other one. And I played my favorite character was Methany Vixen. Methany? Methany. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. Couldn't find a better name if you tried. I know. I know. Methany Vixen. And I love Oh, it. I didn't even hear the Methany Vixen. Vixen. <gasps> yeah. So I'm I played Methany Vixen. Changing my name. I know. And then she said I could be a, she could be my manager. Um, and I was like, oh my God, I have a manager. And then. Did you feel like a hundred million dollars? Literally. Cause she was the top, the top dog. At, at yeah. The there were no other dogs, but she was the <laughs> top dog. And, um, so yeah, she was the manager and then she was like, you have to learn this monologue, uh, so that you can, uh, get an agent. So she picked out a monologue for me, which was, uh, from, a Tennessee Williams one act that I was too young to read because it was about a little girl who was a hooker and the little girl <laughs> lived Seems in on brand for you though. I know <laughs> at this point, I mean, I was like, you know, I was into it though, but the little girl lives in, um, uh, lives, lives in a dumpster by the train tracks and, and her family's all gone. Cause they all got like tuberculosis and, uh, her name's Willie and, uh, she, she anyway so I did the monologue all the time because I was you know learning how to be a star and then I went and I did the audition and the agent like she was very mean but she was like but you you can be a part of the agency so I went out for a couple <laughs> auditions that yeah. was like that she listen I hate you yeah yeah you basically, be part of the agency. no she was like totally like not like into kids but like that was her business isn't that kind of always how it goes why yeah. do I feel like the people who work with kids 
fucking hate kids. I know. I get How it. Kids are happen? horrible. I yeah. mean, I, I would kids like can't some. S- yeah. I would, I'm they're sure people, you know? They're little mini underdeveloped people. Yeah, yeah. underdeveloped people. Overdeveloped fetuses. Um, exactly. <laughs> but uh, anyway, did that. Then I got like one audition and I was flown to LA for a screen test. And then Kristen Stewart got it. What? I know. So Wait, what was it? It was a movie called Catch That Kid. Catch that kid, baby. And it was about these kids that rob a bank to save their parents. And then run away, I And then run away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and a chase ensues. Yeah. That's so <clears throat> funny. So was it, this is obviously your first, like, screen test, like, yeah. thing. Did you feel, were you just excited? Did you feel, like, the weight of it? Like, this could have I been I felt so pivotal? excited. I felt really special. I felt excited. I was really sad when I didn't get it. Yeah. Um, and then I, but it was a good thing. I mean, I'm really glad. I guess I wasn't a child star, though. Now that seems like the only way to make inroads. But you have to be on Disney. Yes, yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a child influencer. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> to have an adult career in influencing. Yeah, um, there you go. But yeah, that, then I didn't, uh, then I got a job when I was 19. It was my first job. And then I didn't work again until I finished college. What was your first job at 19? Uh, it was in a movie directed by the guy who actually created Euphoria, uh, Sam Levinson. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I play this whorish <laughs> once again. It's funny because <clears throat> actually in my adult life, I only play like bookish, gay uh, assistants. I love <laughs> so them. I feel like they, you know, that really is a reflection of how we look at women. You know, they're hot when they're children. Of course. And then they're. they're well, they're whores when they're children. <laughs> they're whores when they're saying. children. And right. then they're over the hill once they're, you know, in their 20s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, or gay. Or gay. <laughs> or gay. Yeah, exactly. But I, uh, no, I play like the, this like, I guess, because the movie is not dissimilar to Euphoria. It's about like a kid who uses lots of drugs and. Oh, that's his thing. He loves people taking drugs. I think that was his, his thing in his life. And now he's making things about it. So I play like, I'm like basically Sydney Sweeney. Oh my God. (laughs) No, no. I I love. I'm like a sister who's like annoying with big boobs. They gave me big boobs in the movie. They gave you big boobs? I wore chicken cutlets. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, I mean, not those are, that's a term, you know. Oh, I know chicken cutlets. Yeah, but, but I was just trying to, for people listening who don't know what it is. I chicken actually, cutlets. They're yeah. inserts into. They're inserts into your boobs. The bra. Yeah, bra. Not to be confused with like the Lily James, Pamela Anderson, like. Yeah, chest paper piece. Paper mache chest piece. Yeah. There we go. Right. That's the word for it. Yeah. Different. These were your actual boobs, just like a little emphasis with a, yeah. underneath. Yeah, yeah. A little stepping stool. Exactly. Um, fascinating. Okay, well, I so I wanted to ask you about three people that you worked with. Yes. Two, and now three. What was Sam Levinson like? Quiet. Great movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was really nice. It was his first movie. Um, yeah, I, yeah, he was great. He had to be. He's young, never huh? responded to my email about how much I liked Euphoria, though. Years later. Sam, I know, what are you doing? Sam. It's okay. People don't have time to respond to emails, you know? They take so long. They take, it's really hard. <laughs> okay, but in his hypothetical defense, I sometimes I'll be like, I have to write this email, and it feels so overwhelming. Yeah. I'm like, I got to work out first. I got to take yeah. a shower. No, I get it. I got to do a morning poop. I yeah. got to walk the dog before I can really sit down and do this email. Yeah. And I'm just replying like, I, I am one hundred dollars an hour. Yeah, yeah, I don't do <laughs> yeah. Email. Like it's not it's the easiest email I've ever right. sent in my life. I don't know why. No, it I get so a compliment hard. email is hard too. Like thanks. I don't know. <laughs> like you'd have to be like you'd have to write like thanks. That's like, you know, if you're for me, you, it's, it's like, really hard. A solid twenty six minutes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Sam Levinson. It was his first movie, so he was kind of figuring out who he was. He was quiet. He was nice. He was he was like focused. I don't know. It was cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll come back. And yeah. then I obviously <laughs> want to know about what was, was, who was first, Fincher or Greta? Uh, oh, it's so funny because Noah Baumbach directed the Greta movie. She didn't direct that one, but they wrote it together. Okay. Um, Great, love it. who was first? They were very close. The Fincher movie came out first. Okay. But, uh, I did the movie with Noah and Greta first. First. Yeah. Okay. So I guess Fincher, cause that's so fast. That role was fascinating to me i love that part it was so fun so fun yeah how did you did you feel comfortable like going into that 
audition. Did you audition? I did audition for that movie. Yeah, it was funny because at the time, my um, mom had read Gone Girl and she'd also read Fifty Shades of Grey and because that was like the books that women were reading that year. Of course. Um, and when my agent was like, okay, we're flying. You got to fly to LA. You have to audition for these two movies, Gone Girl and Fifty Shades of Grey. And my mom was like, oh my God, please, like, don't, don't do Fifty Shades of Grey. And I was like, but like, but she was like, but dude, Gone Girl. Like, I hope that you get Gone Girl. And when I finally, like, I, I did not get Fifty Shades of Grey, just so you know, I'm not in that movie. Oh. That was a crazy audition, though. Really, really funny. Um, but were you auditioning for? For the part. The and it was the, main, the main one. Oh, imagine all of the. I know. Like, grabbing and. Lustfulness she would have endured. I mean, imagine the life I would have had. I would have been. That's true. This would have been my bathroom, this house. That's so true. Um, That's so true. But everyone would have seen all Chris parts Martin of your would body. be my boyfriend. Is that what we're going for? Chris Martin? <laughs> um, no, I mean, Dakota was great in that movie. But, uh, friggin', what am I saying? Oh, that's right. They're dating. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. That was a lost reference on me. I thought we yeah. just put Chris Martin up on a pedestal. No, no, no. I mean, sure, but no. But she was great in that film. She is great. It She's felt great. right. Um, so for Gone Girl was the... So for Gone Girl, my mom thought that I was auditioning for the Emily Rajatowski part. Incredible. And she liked that. She wanted me to be like the hot girl with big boobs of course. who breaks up a marriage of course but when i told her i was like mom i got the part she was like oh my god oh my god who and i was like like or oh my god like not who but she was like yeah and i was like yeah it's crazy like i have to like go and shoot at this like trailer park and she was like why no and i was like oh because like that's the part like i'm like it's like the girl who like robs them and she was like very disappointed. No. <laughs> hey. It's the much more fun role. I had a great time. You don't get to fuck Ben Affleck, but. Yeah, that's you, fine. But I, but it's such a fun role. I remember watching that and being like this. It was very West Virginia. So I, I resonated oh, yeah, yeah, with yeah. it. Yeah. I just felt. Just like she the was from book. Oklahoma in the book. Great. But yeah. Same idea. But. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love. So. But that's my question. Like, did it feel natural or are you like, I'm going to find. I don't know. Well, After oh, done, so but. the audition was funny because I, I don't know what I, I didn't, I was like, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll just like, I'll bring, um, I'll bring M&Ms and I'm going to eat the whole audition. But I'd never practiced doing that and I was kind of nervous. So I opened the M&Ms and I spilled them all over the ground. And then I did the audition while picking them up off the floor and eating them. Okay. And then they were like, genius. oh, like, oh, you got the part. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Yeah. I love that you kept going, though. I would have started shitting my pants a little bit. I know. Well, she was really cool. The class casting director, Lorraine Mayfield, was really fun. So I remember her feeling really, like, encouraged. Okay. And I had a, I, I had a bold confidence at that point in my life. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I just kind of thought, like, roll with it. Has it dissipated, do you feel? I think I maybe think about things a little bit more. Where do you think that comes from? Because I agree with this. I yeah. I feel this. I, I I feel more confident in myself and my self worth, but I have more anxiety yeah. about what I'm saying and what I'm doing. Yeah, I think that's probably just like being like having more experiences. Like I I didn't know then what it was like to like have something and then not have something. Sure. Like I only I had nothing to lose in a lot of ways. Um, and I also feel like when you're young, you kind of, I always picture it visually as like, you're born with like this, like, you know, the blinders over your eyes. And as you get older, hopefully, yeah. like, you know, if you're lucky, they keep going and going and going until you can see more and more and more. Yeah. Right. Um, I think it takes like conversation and it takes, you know, fucking reading books or whatever yeah. to kind of expand your view. But I do feel like it's wonderful to be there and to see it kind of open up, but it's almost like you start to see more places where it can go wrong mm -hmm. with that. That comes with it. Yeah. It's like, oh, I, I, I inherently know now how bad things can be because I know how thick things are. Yeah. Does that sounds super heady. And no, I get dumb. that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cause I'm in the same boat. I'm like, why? Cause I feel, I feel better about myself. Do you mm -hmm. feel like, you oh, I feel so much better about myself. Yeah. Like, yeah. 
but it but there is like a pressure or an anxiety or something maybe it just comes to getting older yeah I don't know okay so that you yeah, I want to protect the- myself more like I don't think I was so interested in protecting myself when I was younger mm. I mean what would you have protected yourself from though I guess I mean, the toxic industries that I threw myself into with complete, you know, and utter abandon, which I still, you know, hope can be good and I think make good work every now and then. But it's pretty, uh, I don't know that I would have been an actress if I had really, I love acting so much. I think acting is incredible. I think there are some really amazing things being made today and, and I hope that that will continue. But I don't know that I would have chosen this, especially with what I think it takes to be an actor now in a different way. I mean, there was no like public social media then. Yeah, like it's very different. As an now. actor, you did not have a public Instagram. I mean, there were so many other metrics of, of someone's value that have nothing to do with who they are because it's a business. Um, but yeah, I think I just didn't really get all, all, of, all of that. Do you think that there's more pressure a little bit too because there are, because there is that eyeball, um, like there's just so much more to do yeah, and to do wrong yeah, almost now too. Mm-hmm. I think, I actually talked about this on a previous episode with Adley, but there's just, it's nice that there are so many ways to get yourself seen in the world, but with that comes inherently, like there's so many ways that you are not then yeah. doing things. And there's so all that pressure as well to just constantly be doing shit. Yeah. Yeah. And that. saturate things. And I think yeah. that that feels really sad. Like, it, I don't know. Just uh, like even now the things like even like the Met Gala looks saturated to me in a certain way instead of like yes. curated. If if I feel like the majority of things and I'm in the world, we're all in the world. But yeah. I feel like the majority of things are created for the 15 seconds that you're going to see. Yes, yes. For the tweet that you're going to tweet out. Right. And it's always been there, and I get that. Press and PR and sound bites have always been there. But I feel like I see it more. I can, like, see the seams of, oh, I'm, you, I'm, you're creating this thing for, yeah, the sound bite version of it. Yeah. To get people, for it to get a million views on whatever platform or a million reshares or whatever. And I just think it's interesting I don't know if I see the seams because I'm in it mm. or if I see the seams because they're just more obvious now and because yeah. everyone's doing it doesn't matter. I don't know. Yeah. Do you feel like – we've talked about this. Do you feel if you didn't have to kind of co- compensate, if everyone didn't have to compensate via social media, via whatever it may be, do you feel like you would still feel the same way about – acting right now um I don't know I mean I think that I think that the onus for promotion falls so much more on an actor now like I I see a lot of my friends who are actors who have to do promo for the promo that they're doing like we think we've become accustomed to seeing an actress take a photo of herself doing press Mm -hmm. like I'm wearing this you'll see this on AOL live or whatever, but you'll also see it on my Instagram, which probably has more followers than AOL live or maybe not AOL live, but it's this very weird thing where I'm like, Oh, studios are like depending on actors working even harder than just doing like a press junket and just doing the work that it was to actually make the piece that they're promoting. It's like this constant, your life becomes this promotion for what you're doing yeah. And it's really weird. And I think that we, we've we normalized that in, in influencers. I mean, I was reading about this uh, one influencer who's now, like, teaching a course for how to stop being an influencer. Oh. Because it's, like, sex – as addictive as sex, sex work. Like, you could for make sure. so much money in such a shorter period of time and have this kind of veneer of control or sense of control mm-hmm. over your own life because you're not working a regular nine-to-five – um, but then it's really taken over your life. And, um, I was just thinking like, oh, that like working as an artist now looks a lot more like that. And if you're not willing to do that, then you maybe shouldn't be an artist. And that is something that I, I question all the time. Like, I know that there are lots of people out there who are going to be willing to be on social media in a, or enjoy being on social media. Cause I am kind of willing. I mean, I, I, 
I have, I do it all the time. Yeah. Um, and I love your social media presence. Oh, way. thank you. I think you're one of the, the best follows. I think that oh, you're. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so, <laughs> I really am so entertained. I just want to make sure I say this. I'm so entertained by all of your TikToks that you do. And I feel like you understand the platform. Like when you're, I, there is an obvious like, hey, I'm trying to shoehorn my song into this yeah, thing. Yeah, sure, sure. But it's done in such a fun it's better than like I'm gonna play it on the radio or play it on in my car or on the you know what I mean I just mm. like I like what you do and I think your self awareness and your self deprecation across across all platforms <laughs> across all platforms across life all the across life yeah mm, yeah just in IRL as well yeah <laughs> um, I don't know I find it really endearing and fun to just engage with I feel like I'm throwing like TED talk words out but. no I love that I mean I'm happy to hear that I I I do enjoy like making videos as well to a certain degree what I don't enjoy is then like the ability to see how they're working if they don't work like I made a video yes. of me yesterday that was like smoking a corn cob uh pipe great and it was like the first video I'd made in a while that was beginning to get any kind of traction and then they took it off <laughs> and I was like oh my god of course like of course of course but also I don't know I I'm mystified by social media it was definitely not part of the job when I started it yeah. uh as a both an actor and a musician and um oh my god that chicken for those who cannot see right now, there are two like amazing looking chickens. They're very sexy chickens. They're gorgeous chickens. I, I would. They look like Clydesdales. I think really they're like the show Clydesdales chickens. of chickens. Mm. They're gorgeous. Um, I agree. But it wasn't part of the job when I started it at all. Yeah. There were other things, but that seemed a lot more glamorous. I don't know. Uh, to an outsider, you know, sure. being chased by paparazzi while walking with your boyfriend in a stupid hat, you know. It does seem glamorous a little yeah. bit. Rather than being like, me and my boyfriend, <laughs> ah, we're Sally, here. we are here. You're we had the best time. Yeah, we're our own that paparazzi. Is, we are our own paparazzi at this point. It's funny. That it's, I think it's so strange that being a paparazzi or a tabloid photographer, if you will, is a, still a job. Yeah, it's crazy. I guess it's like, at this point, I, can you hide a relationship? Like, someone, they should unionize against they, social media. They really should. Yeah. I don't understand how they still have jobs. That's a really great. I've never thought about that. I mean, I guess you have to, they are still there to expose what you won't show about yourself, I guess. But you don't think some random person in a Chick-fil-A bathroom, like with their phone out, the wall can't expose right, you. Right, 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 right. You know what I mean? Like there's really, everyone else can do it. Yeah. Everyone else right. is a contributor to the mayhem. Yeah. There's how many, I, I this could just be my um, very embarrassing algorithm, but I feel like I go online and I just see videos of people filming random people on the street, like. Look at this idiot. Yeah. There's no way to escape it. I know. And it's good and bad because you get held accountable. But yeah, it makes me wonder like what, um, like how do these people have jobs? What are they even doing? I don't know. And they still get paid. Like, and they still get paid. Yeah. You know, if some famous couple wants to, I guess, expose their relationship, you can still like call the paparazzi and be like, come take a photo of me. Yeah. Why wouldn't you just do like a TikTok announcement? <laughs> right, right, right. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's like old school or something. There is something. There is something. Um, They're just going to be replaced by AI. <laughs> like us all. Fucking, we're all fucking getting replaced by yeah. AI. It's not even. Ugh. Um, okay. So, but then, so I guess it is interesting because you are very established. You've been doing this for a very long time. And this new kind of wave of social media and stuff. I've never really thought of it this way. I am not established in that way. So for me, social media feels like a way in which to get your foot in the door. Yeah. But for people who already have both feet in the door, it's almost like, um, what would be the name? Both it's feet like in the room. moving but, from like the silent pictures to like the talkies. 100%. <laughs> like if you were a silent film star, if you don't have, you know, a good voice on recording or whatever then you can't have this new career that sometimes really is what it feels like not that I was a silent film star I feel like I was like an, an ingenue in the in the silent days and then it was like and next and the next decade is really gonna be great kid and then you're like wait a minute what they talk now <laughs> <laughs> I don't what? get it <laughs> but but that's so true because it because it's it's also like they're asking hey you're already doing the thing we're actually going to ask you to do 10 other things yeah. as well. You're not going to 
get paid anymore. There's not going to be anything. But like, you just have to do it or right. you can stay in the same spot. Yeah. That's so fucking frustrating. It's really weird. I've never thought of it in that way. But yeah, people who have already, who've been in this industry, who have already established it, who still need to maintain a social media presence, like we all do. I yeah. mean, everyone does. Yeah, it's got to be a weird transition. But I, for the record, I think you're picking up talkies quite well. Thank you so much. You're so the welcome. TikTokies. Oh, God. Stop that was it. bad. That was really bad. I loved it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll clip it. Everyone will love it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and then I also wanted to talk about Mozart. Yeah. Because I haven't seen him. I want, I want to watch it. It's cute. Uh, it seems really cute. I didn't know much. I watched the trailer, and I was like, this is a really – cute show it was so cute i love your character from what i saw in the trailer um i would imagine too going off of what we were just talking about was that the first like big thing where you do a bunch of press and do you feel like that was like a different level or not i had done i mean no yes and no i mean okay. i had we had done some really like fancy junkets for mistress america the noah baumbach greta gerwig movie um, that were amazing and I had never done anything like that before and like festivals and all, all kinds of stuff. Um, did that movie, sorry, go back. Did that yeah. movie make it to festivals? And do it did. Festivals? That movie okay. went to Sundance, which was really fun. Yeah. Um, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I almost got arrested on my way to Sundance. Well, of course, as you yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. I almost didn't make it there. What were you doing? I was we talk about accused it? of trafficking drugs, uh, by a police officer who wasn't able to find them. I mean, any. <laughs> Wait, for real? Yeah. Did you just look? They were just like, this chick's. They, I was taking the pockets? train, which I guess was the first giveaway. There's a train? There's a train. It was a train from New York, and then we transferred in Chicago, and then Chicago to Salt Lake. And you just had like a thick bag full of powder? No, like? I had like a, nothing. I had no <laughs> drugs on me. Right, right, right. right. Um, keep it clean, keep it clean. And if, if I did, it was very small for personal use. You oh, know, I wasn't going to sell it. I was no. just ready to hang out and party. <laughs> um, That's wild. It was crazy. But it went, went to Sundance. It was really fun. Um, and that was before she didn't direct it. She helped write it. Yeah, Noah. she just co-wrote it and she stars in it. Right. Um, I think I ran randomly sidebar saw this movie on a date. I think some random guy took me on a date. I love that. To go. They were like screening it at Soho House, I think. That makes sense. A horrible date. Yeah, I'm so sorry. But I loved the film. It's really cute. It's a really cute film. Yeah. Um, okay, so that was the force, force foray. Yeah, force my force foray. foray. Yeah. Um, and then what, do, what, how do we feel about Greta? I, I love just, Greta. Yeah. Love Greta. We, okay. we were supposed to do a play together that was like ill-fated. I mean, <laughs> um, I was supposed to be doing it right now as we speak. Um, so good thing, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to be here. Well, we are happy. <laughs> um, but I hope it will happen. But we were supposed to be doing the Three Sisters, the Chekhov play right now in New York. Um, but it got postponed because I think, you know, independent theater or off Broadway is in a terrible spot too. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. There's no, like, it, I think the sad thing about social media in a lot of ways, while it has given voice to a lot of, um, artists who wouldn't necessarily have that kind of opportunity and a lot of great personalities and, you know, people who are worthy of, of attention is that it has also like taken certain institutions, ability a way to exist like you can't have I think it's less about social media power in uh, in the theater but more about like star power like you now need more you need names in off-Broadway theaters more than you need sometimes even in a movie because people don't really go to the theater in the same way sure. um and it's really sad I mean I just wonder if there was a way that we could actually like make social media contribute to a little bit more like democracy in the art rather than mm. this kind of uh, I don't know <laughs> I, I, bureaucracy that it feels like it is I don't know what it feels it just feels like there's a lot of uh like what other Chrissy's are there <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy Teigen's <laughs> we got a lot it just feels like it, it it's not making things more fair <laughs> sure necessarily sure do you so I guess uh, uh, tangibly, yeah. What is that like? Do you feel like, in order for a show to do well, there has to be an outside presence besides just the story of the show? 
like the actors or there has to be like I mean so I I, I that think what you're saying? yeah I think that that is true and it's just like certain institutions that are really wonderful I mean independent cinema now like you have like a Disney kid in it for one second because they're allowed to they can bring a certain amount of budget because people are going to watch the movie if they know that this person's in it. Sure. Not that there aren't a lot of amazingly hardworking and gifted kids that have transitioned from being in Disney uh, things to being good actors. But it's just this weird... Um, I, I remember when I first started working in independent films, it was like, oh, wow, like every... like why is Connie Britton in this and this and this? Like you see all these amazing mm -hmm. actors that would like, that would bring a lot of financial power to these smaller projects. And that's a great thing. Um, but now I think because there's so much stuff you need, like, I don't know, you have these movies about like people in the middle of nowhere and they all have incredible Botox and filler <laughs> and you know, like Fair. the yep. craziest <laughs> like extensions you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And they're meant to be like, you know, blue collar workers and I'm just like this makes no sense you just like had to hire someone with like 10 million followers to get your movie made so while it's a good thing in a way because then someone can make their movie because that person wants to make the movie it's also like killing independent film it's killing independent theater um and that makes me sad it's killing independent music there is no more independence right now because i think what we now think of as independence is largely owned by these giant corporations of course yeah and it's like you um and listen i i this is a something that i am i very much try to be the benefactor of yeah and the, be, reap the benefits of but i do feel like uh sometimes we look at numbers based on merit and not actually merit. Yeah. Or like, yeah. it's like, oh, let's just try to shoehorn someone who has eyeballs on their face into this thing when they don't have, it doesn't happen for any other career. Yeah. There's not like some, like some world famous surgeon. I don't know. I feel it. Not, not in, not, maybe not in, it's happening on the business side though. I definitely think. And, in, in, in sure. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I guess that makes sense. Like yeah. if you, well, now, it's if you're PR, in business, you also, like, I, I see it happen at studios and labels and stuff. It's like, that person has, a, like, why does that person have 50,000 followers? Sure. Like, who are they? Sure. I guess they're not they're... a public-facing ass, like, but no. maybe they are because they're, they engage with public-facing people. So, I guess just across the board, ha <laughs> like, having numbers behind your name yeah. just makes you more, makes you seem more valid. But yeah, I but it obviously doesn't yeah, translate. It doesn't majority of the time, I would say. I know because what you're doing on these platforms is really honing a very specific skill. Like, I don't know that your ability to be a good realtor is at all conveyed in your ability to make a good TikTok. But it might be conveyed in your ability. I don't know. I think what it ultimately comes down to is like how bad you want power. Like okay, so the drive, it, like, yeah, it, it's your drive might one -to -one be there. On drive. Okay. Though I watched Selling Sunset, and I'm not sure I would want to buy a house from any of those women. <laughs> I mean, they yeah, it's fair. <laughs> like they're amazing and entertaining, uh, but like it doesn't really feel like it's like about me and my happiness. No, 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 they they don't care about your. They happiness. don't care about my happiness. No, no, no. They just want like their business, and also they seem very preoccupied with you know murdering each other. So <laughs> I don't know. They've got a lot going on. They really do. Yeah, I don't know who does the contracts. Not them. I, They're too, way too busy. Yeah, way too busy. They're <laughs> too busy. Point. I need more attention than that. You know. Okay, so I want to, I want to talk yeah. about uh, same. I want to talk about music. Yeah. Um, my first question is, and I want to. I've had this question and I'm like, I feel like there's a way to ask this question that can come off weird and judgmental and it's not at all how I mean it. I'm curious how you landed on the type of music that yeah. you do. Yeah, klezmer. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Klezmer, it's a Jewish kind of music. I was joking. It was a joke. It was a joke. Oh God! I, I wish know. I wasn't so stupid. I would. No, it would have been really good if you weren't so stupid. But um, so <laughs> and I can't do another take. I oh, really shit. only have one. In okay, yeah. Um, no, I landed on country music. I think initially because or country inspired music. Uh, I I started playing ukulele and I got these jump and gym ukul ukulele songbooks. And the country one was honestly the easiest one because it's three chords and the truth in every song. So it was like the least amount of 
um, you know, uh, knowledge required, sure, sure, <laughs> it sure, seemed. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that there is something so incredible about country music where they can take it sounds so simple. They yeah. There's a way in the writing of country songs that the most complicated ideas can be made simple. And I think that can be very um, deceiving to somebody who doesn't know much about it because you're like, I could just kind of like put a twang on it and make it country. But ultimately, I think that it's incredibly um, difficult. And as I've, you know, gotten deeper and deeper into country music, I see how much, uh, how much of an art form it really, really is yeah. um, to say something perfectly. Mm -hmm. And to be able to break someone's heart or make somebody laugh, uh, you know, with like the least amount of words possible, um, but in like a perfect sentence. So I think I'm very motivated by by writing like the best song that I can write. And that's something I continue to, to do, um, to try and do. Um, and I also just find like indie music really elitist. And I feel like for, you know, uh, wealthy white girls from New York City, that's like, you're, like, you're indie, right? <laughs> you're just indie. Um, I was like, <laughs> I was born indie. Now I just want to belong. <laughs> I don't want to, oh I don't want to stand out. I just want to be <laughs> accepted. <Relatable. laughs> um, by, and arguably, I will never really fit in or be accepted by, you know, a country crowd. But I love it so much. And I, I just feel like... I, Why do you think you won't ever be accepted? Because you're from New York? Well, I feel like that is, yes. But in a way, I'm like doing the best you can with what you have is like more country than anything. <laughs> so maybe if yeah. maybe I don't need to be from Alabama. Every time I read someone's bio about like a country artist bio, the first thing it says, it's like North Carolina born. Of course. I'm like, course. why couldn't my parents have just been like on a layover when, you know, somewhere in the South when I was born? Let's We can just go back and fix the birth certificate. Yeah. No one will know. <laughs> it's going to um, be that hard. No, but I also, I, I don't know, I just connect with it the most. And it's most exciting for me to listen to. I like the payoff of country music a lot more. Like, I don't know. I like songs about things. And that's not to say I yeah. like all country music. I There's some that I think is terrible, just like there is other kind, kinds of music that has good and bad parts. But um, I don't know. It's just most exciting and it's fun. It's so fun. It's so fun. It fits you. Thank you. There's, okay. So I want, this is going to, this is the biggest compliment I can give to oh anyone God, in the I world. Can't wait. Because it makes me feel so seen. I tell everyone who wants to hear that I, I feel very white trash. <laughs> like I, that is what I claim to be. That is, I think it's like hidden. I think I've suppressed it for so long, but I, I, I really do at my core feel like just a piece of white trash in the best way possible. I kind of love it. I'm, yeah. I'm learning to love it. And I feel like there is the tiniest little baby sliver of that in you. Am oh my I God. wrong? They <laughs> oh, good. Okay, good. No, this, I'm, this I'm go so flattered. Ways. No, I really, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, I, I feel like it's such a complicated thing to talk about because like there's something about like that culture that, you know, you can't, uh, we live in an age where you can't appropriate any kind of culture, but I feel like country for, it's like, the, I mean, uh, Yellowstone's uh, popularity could tell us that it's like, okay, to appropriate like agricultural, rural, <laughs> yep. white people's culture. Yeah. I, um, I, I, like, and there's no problem with it. Um, and sometimes I feel like, uh, and I'm like, oh shit, am I just doing that? You know, like, but also... It does. I do feel very connected to country music. So, so whatever. I think it's actually way cooler. I think it's actually, I'm sorry. I think it's way weirder for someone to be like, no, I'm going to do country music because I'm from Oklahoma and that's what I should do. Yeah. Or I'm from Kentucky and that's what I should do. As opposed to this is the music that I resonate with and that I like so much. This is so annoying. Um, I like these mics though. They're great. They're, yeah. They're phallic, but they're great. Um, <laughs> what mic isn't phallic? Fair, fair enough. Be cool if there's like a vaginal mic. <laughs> yes. Just like an open yeah. lily vaginal. Like yeah, that'd be beautiful. Okay, write it down. All right, yeah, Shark right tank. Down. Yep. Shark but tank. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But I do. I think it would be so much weirder if the reason you were doing country music is because of where you were from. Right. If that's like what you're doing and you're just kind of like trying to – shoehorn in how you feel about country music as opposed to I don't think it matters where you're from if you country the point of country music is to make people feel a certain thing yeah to tell a story to make people there's a culture behind it's it. it's like the point I guess it's like you actually like want to connect with people yes like also 
I feel like I listen to a lot of indie music and I'm like, I can't understand anything they're saying. <laughs> sure. And yeah. like the song is 10 minutes long and there's no chorus. It's so long. It's so long. It's so and long. like no one looks like they're having a good time. I know. It's, it's so it's, like, yes. it's, it's like, uh, are we supposed to not connect with each other? I'm so tired of not connecting with anybody. I know. So I don't know. I like country music better. I feel very connected to it, even though, and and that says a lot about that that genre of music because I'm from you know Lower Manhattan, so yes. if I can feel like I get it when I listen to it, then they're doing the right thing. Whether and I feel like the thing about indie, I mean, and this is not all indie music. There's some awesome artists within that genre, but I do feel like the ethos of that genre is to like basically bully people into submission, sure, yeah, <laughs> and like make them feel like they're not cool, so then they like go and try really hard i don't know no i get it i get it i'll have a more articulate way of explaining this that doesn't offend anybody i feel like really good writers like have ways of or really smart people can like describe things without like offending anybody but just mentioning all the salient points that's not a good writer that's just some, that's, like, that's someone who's good in pr what yeah yeah good pr good PR. yeah the, the way i really feel about it is what i just said but i feel like there could be a better way of explaining those feelings without pissing off the majority of my friend group honestly who are indie artists i mean i love yeah. them i'm just like what 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 are you guys who who's this music for i think that's fine it's also who's the music for like seriously who is the music for like i, I don't know, know. Like Christian music, I'm I'm not gonna make Christian music. I am a Jew, and I do feel like that might be a slight, you know, uh, that might be frowned upon. That might be a little, yeah, a little bit difficult. But I'm like, it's for Christian people. It's for the Christians, <laughs> correct? Correct. That's very. It's. I mean, it's in the name. Yeah, it's in the name. It's delineated. Country music for the people in the country. For the people all, and, and in any country. In really any country. <laughs> We're opening it up. We're expanding. We're opening it up. Indie music, like I don't know, like. Like, I just feel like there's so many, like, we just, I don't know. They already have so much. <laughs> fair, fair. No, and I, again, I think it would be weird if you didn't, if it didn't come natural to you, don't do it. Mm. I don't know. It's like, it's, it's, is it the only genre of music where, where you're from and what accent you have determines whether or not. Right. Cause people be from valid. Texas go and make indie music all the time and no one's like, you're from Texas. You can't make indie music. Of course. <laughs> of course. I mean, yeah. look at any country music artist who's crossed over into pop. No one's like, sorry, you got too much twang. Yeah. You got too much twang. Yeah. No, I think it's, it's so strange. It's about making people feel something and, and I love your music. You know, I'm obsessed Thank with you. Music. It's That's so, so good. nice. Thank you. How did you, what was the, I love the workout videos that you did for Lady for Sale. What was the idea behind that? Or like, how did that come about? Well, the workout videos were because I was told I was fat. Shut up. Yeah, I was told I was fat. Everyone that I used Who? to work with, my old agents, fight um, and my mother, <laughs> um, but they were I all like, you're She's fat. So no, yeah, yeah, don't fight her. <laughs> she would win. Um, they said it in like a really like backhanded way. Um, and I was what like, what did they say? I'm just curious. Like what, like you don't have to give me the exact oh quote. Oh God. Um, what did they say? You got your, I mean, it was like, they were speaking in a lot of coded language. Like, you know, put your best foot forward. Uh, not those jeans or whatever. Sure, and sure, I sure, gained sure. weight. Um, I had gained weight. I mean, during the pandemic, I honestly was living in a house that only had one mirror and it was for my boyfriend who's six foot four. So it was just his little face mirror. So sure, I would I just no idea. reach up on my tippy toes and look and see my face and it still looked the same. It was still there. Great. Still attached. Ready and then rock. I didn't, I didn't know and I didn't have any clothes with me cause I was kind of marooned here in Nashville, which I, you know, loved and was yeah. by design, but I, you know, I was just naked for months of eating with my new boyfriend. Right. Um, Damn, that sounds so fun. But, uh, <laughs> did you miss it a little bit? I do miss that part, yeah. But I didn't know I'd gained weight. And so then they were like, you've gained weight and like you're not going to get any jobs. I can't remember the exact language, but it crushed my like soul. It crushed my soul. I, I think I didn't know. When I was younger too, like I, I was, I think I was probably heavier when I was younger, but I felt not heavier than I am now. I, it never occurred to me to think that I was fat when I was younger. Like, it didn't, when I first started acting yeah. even, like, I never, I remember people said things to me, like, I had a sound guy on my first movie tell me, like, that I was going to get a flat tire if I was at craft services all the time, and for those who don't know craft services, it's a table filled with all the snacks I wasn't allowed to eat as a child, 
Like literally the oh, greatest yeah. snacks for free at any time. Any point in time. And any time. So much downtime. I know. Like, what else the fuck are you supposed to do? I don't know. Downtime? And then I would, as I got older and I, you know, more and more people would say things to me on sets. I can't believe you said that, by the way. That is. Oh, that was like the least of it. I've gotten so many horrible comments on sets Ooh. about my body. Um, but like, I guess they were right. But like, I would see these actors and they're like, I actually only drink a charcoal um, smoothie <laughs> the whole day. I'm like, so what do you do? Do you smoke cigarettes all day? Like, what do you do? Do you read a book? Like, are, you can't be focused on this work that much because this scene is like you with the green screen. You know, yeah, like yeah, there's yeah, nothing yeah. happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't get it. That's so. Yeah, I don't know. I... <sighs> but anyway, the workout video. So yeah, it was my like fun way of being like my cheeky way of like I'm going to lose weight, but I'm also going to make this like hilarious Jane Fonda-esque workout video because I love Jane Fonda, even though she had horrible eating disorders and talks about that all the time. Yeah. Um, but it was just like, oh, I, I don't know. It was my way of taking back like weight loss and making it fun for me and start fitness instead of like being like this is something terrible that like you know, is a, is a value that I think is dumb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was very alive in my family of origin growing up and is alive, like in a viral way, not viral, like, you know, viral, <laughs> like viral, like a virus in our culture. Sure. 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 It's so funny. Cause I, I feel like our culture feels our culture can be very self-important and I feel like it feels like it's done so much. Oh my God. That's such of, a lie. And I can, I can see like the way we talk about bodies is different, but I think, I don't know if we ever can, but if we can, it's going to be a long time from now, get over the subconscious level of like looking at someone, looking at how they look in an outfit and making a direct correlation to something. Yeah. I don't, like it at all I don't like looking at myself and making a direct correlation to something I feel like we're at least getting better but I feel I the 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 zeitgeist um you know tweet is body issues are not a problem anymore like body positivity is everywhere and that's so wild to me because I like don't see any actresses that are like size like six to ten yeah <laughs> yeah like you see these extremes and it's of of like you know larger bodies on screen and like that's that's great yeah and then like but every like ingenue looks like a child yeah. like an emaciated child yeah somehow with a great butt and oftentimes with huge tits <laughs> but course. but otherwise like an emaciated child yeah so interesting and then I've seen there have been a few people that I've seen that I thought had like normal bodies and they end up getting a lot smaller. Or they're pregnant, the I find out afterwards. <laughs> and I'm so, I'm like, oh my God, finally. It looks like me. It looks like me. And she was like eight months pregnant. And she's fully on the table having a baby. Yeah, literally. Oof. Yeah. God, it's so relatable. Well, I don't know. I mean, I guess, this. Well, I guess what I'm saying is the steps are a lot smaller than we're making them seem. But I guess we're making steps because at least yeah. people are able to talk about it in a way. True. I mean, and maybe that is because we have social media. I think so. I think but I feel like things. social media is also contributing to the to the of course issue that we're allowed to talk about because of social media. Well, we should definitely should not be able to stare at ourselves all of the fucking time. No, but we should go back to the silent film days. I feel like, like. should we just do a full one eighty? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this is our Handmaid's Tale, not sex. Slaves. Yeah, yeah. It's si just silent films. Just silent films. Silent people. That would be so beautiful. I have no attention span for anything. I find myself yeah. in the car being like, at the same time that I'm saying like you know what? I'm just going to drive in silence. I'm also putting on a podcast. Oh, there's at the same nothing. time. I can't, I've got to the point, Lola. I can't even, I go to take a shit yeah. and I'm like, where's my phone? Oh, I can't go to the bathroom without my phone. Without your phone. I no. can't remember a time when I could. My phone. And I also, I don't clean my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't taken a Lysol wipe to my phone in so long. If they give me one when I got on an airplane, I'll think about using it. That's gonna be the, the last thing. The last time I did it was like when COVID was rampant, and yeah. I was like, no, I can't risk it. No, but I literally wipe my ass and then go right on my phone right away. <laughs> and then I eat with my phone. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh well. I. I. And then I'll say like, oh, I'm not gonna eat with my phone either. But then there I am, like you know. Oh, feeding it. Of course. I give it little bites of eggs in the morning. You know. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't want it to go hungry. No, of course not. It's very important. Yes, you're, yeah. you're an empath. Um, yeah, I, I am an empath. You it's are. true. I could feel that from you. Thank you. Thank you. I am as well. Um, okay, so do you want? Do you have some? I have a tour coming up. No, I do. I have a tour coming up. I'm going out uh, in July, and then I go out again in August and September, and then November. I love it. I know. I'm so excited. Are you bopping all over the country? Is that what we're I'm doing? bopping around. Yeah. I feel like the one place I'm really like missing is like maybe like, no, I think I am playing in Colorado. So I, no, I'm, I'm going everywhere. I love it. I mean, maybe Montana and like Wyoming, but they don't have TikTok in Wyoming anymore. So they don't. Oh my God. What a foreign world that must be. It must be crazy. It's like the handmaid said. They only watch silent films in Wyoming. <laughs> what do you, I love this. What do you think happens if you break out like a ring light in Wyoming? You think they immediately jail you? Well, it's funny because you could do, you could say like, I'm using the ring light for Facebook. Stop. Like I'm it's using, not, they I'm have a band t-shirts. all, it's, I swear this is for Facebook. <laughs> I swear this is for Facebook. Yeah. I'm making baby tees. Let's say it's for this. That's his money. Yeah. Ever. I swear this and sell them only in Wyoming. Oh, that's and good. This is so good. How many followers do you have in Wyoming? I do have to look. I'll have you my team. You can see that? <laughs> I don't know. Probably. There's probably some sort of There's definitely site. some way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure I have to pay like three payments of nine ninety nine to figure it out. But we should like the way we should like champion Wyoming influencers. <laughs> should we start like a GoFundMe for Wyoming Definitely. Like how will they live now that they can't talk? I haven't even thought about and that. And not talk T-A-L-K. No, no. Not yeah. T-A-L-K. I, they've had to have moved. The influence yeah. of, they had to have. But if it's premises. like ranch life, then like I guess there's other places you can ranch. They go on, like, the very outskirts. Yeah. What if there's just, like, over the next couple of years, there's just, like, on the border of Wyoming is, like, we're all being Like, the Great Migration. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like a diaspora. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love this. Yeah. Should we just write this? This feels like a movie. Should yeah, this feels this like movie? we should definitely write this movie. Okay, we got a lot to do. We really do. Um, Where can people find you, Lola? They can find me... Um, crying in my room no they can find me (laughs) they can find me um on spotify i meant to tell people to follow me on spotify because apparently that's like really good that's what they told me at the spotify at the spotify meeting i went to which was so fun oh i'm sure it was a very unbiased (laughs) um it was really really funny i wish i could talk more about that right now we won't. Yeah, we won't. We'll save it for it was it, for another time. It was it was great though. Um, but follow me on Spotify or on Instagram. I guess those yeah. are great places. Those are fabulous, amazing, uh, wonderful platforms. And on TikTok because I, I apparently Courtney thinks I'm funny on TikTok. I love you on TikTok. Thank you so much. I'm enthralled by you. And I guess I have a Facebook too, but I I uh, but someone else runs it. In Wyoming. <laughs> in Wyoming. In Wyoming. Yeah. We they have to give them, throw them all the jobs we can in Wyoming right we now. We have to. Yeah. Because otherwise. Wyoming. Yeah. <laughs> Wyoming. Why not? You know? Yeah. Right. Um, okay. And then tickets for your. Oh, yeah. My website. Lola Kirk Music dot com. Love it. Yeah. Not to be confused with Lola Kirk nudes. <laughs> <laughs> nudes. Yeah. Different I wouldn't want to go there. Yeah, different, different site. site. Different site. Only for Wyoming. Yeah. Uh, what? You, anything else you're excited about in the world? Apparently, I have a high rating on WikiFeed. Shut up! Yeah. Oh my god. And you wear closed-toed shoes? Well, my I need I need a pedicure. I don't think it matters. I find pedicures to be extremely boring. Oh, okay. Especially if I don't have my phone. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. I don't even know how to read a magazine anymore. Oh my god! I bought one the other day, but it was just basically like an analog version of my phone. That's what it is, though. Yeah, People Magazine. I was like, I'm gonna take a break from my phone and read People Magazine. And it was like Gwyneth wow. Paltrow like rating her like Brad Pitt and Ben Affleck as lovers. And I was like, this is what celebrities talk about now. I feel like I saw that on a video on TikTok from a podcast. Yeah. So it they're is. they're just repurposing yeah. on. Yeah, it's the same thing. <laughs> print now? Yeah. And so fascinating. Okay. Well, check her out on Wikifeed as well. Yeah, check me out on Wikifeed. See the goods. Yeah. Thank you, Courtney. I adore you. You're amazing. I adore you too.